Uh, kia ora. Hi, I'm Otto, Otto Grubel. I think most may know me and I'm very interested in solar astronomy. And thank you for inviting me for today to talk about imaging and processing of the ISS transits of the Sun in Calcium K. Also, I'm a member of the uh, Dispon Astronomer Society and the Russians as well. So I have developed a little bit advanced new processing te techniques of the ISS transit. Then before I will show you in that presentation, at first a short introduction, uh, then I will uh, talk mainly about the workflow, how I image uh, the ISS, then the processing, and also at the end I speak about how I do make my videos. So now we're coming to the first slide. Uh, ISS is part of the transits going across the sun visible from the Earth. ISS is the third brightest uh, uh, object seen in the sky and uh, is one of the objects transiting across the sun. The Venus and the Mercury do it as well, but today I will clearly focus on the ISS transit. And that uh, is uh, what I will do. And uh, the ISS is about 400 kilometers uh, above uh, the Earth and orbits around the Earth uh, in a distance of 400 kilometers. So, so ideal, if you ideal 400 kilometer is the uh, the minimum distance you can get with a transit. Uh, it is very good when you have 430 or 540 kilometers. The farther that you are away from the ISS in the angle, uh, the smaller the ISS will look at the transit. Uh, I have also had transits of 700 kilometers, like recent one in hydrogen alpha, and the closest one 430 kilometers at the 5th of March. That's the next image here. I speak mainly about ISS transit across the sun in calcium K, but the processing is in hydrogen alpha and white light the same, in principle the same. Here, that is a good example I had at the 5th of March of an ISS transit across the sun. The distance was 430 kilometers, it cannot get better. And also the weather conditions were good, it was at the Vipo golf course. I got the focus right, the ISS got sharp, uh, the sun is also very active. You see here structures like a um, big sunspot here with the plagues around it. It's very well visible in the calcium K. Uh, it uh, shows the magnetic activity and the magnetic energy. He, uh, here is another sunspot 2957 and he, this group the ISS is crossing this sunspot. And here you have the ISS, and here a little bit uh, bigger, and you see clear the structures of the ISS with the pendles, uh, solar pendles as well. So that was uh, one of the best moments of an ISS transit I had. And here I also image the prominences of the calcium K and uh, copy the end image with the ISS also into the overexposed prominence images you see here as well. Uh, so it's a quite active uh, sun. So before coming to the processing of my most recent ISS transit that speak about uh, my tools uh, for solar imaging, uh, so I use for travel a land refractor telescope 60 millimeter at home. I have also an 80 millimeter achromic, uh, uh, achromatic refractor, but for traveling I'll use that. And then I have uh, recent bought an Hercules Herschel wedge for white light imaging. I've still the Mylof glass filter and um, for the calcium K, I have the calcium K filter, Lund 
long calcium K filter, a blocking filter 1200. So the better the blocking filter, the better you may get the contrast. Then I have in hydrogen alpha solar telescope corner to solar max 60, blocking filter 10 millimeter. Then I use the video a mono video camera. Now mostly the AC 174mm. Uh, have now for the imaging using mainly the Windows 10 tablet. Not anymore with the computer with the fire capture, rather now with the sharp cap and with their videos. Then of course I have a sturdy, uh, have now a small mount, the Solar Quest uh, from Skywatcher or the Ableton Adset Mount Pro. And for quick imaging, sometimes I can use also an old camera, but I do, don't do that so often anymore. Now for the, that's the Solarmax 260. That's what I use for the ISS transiting calcium K. That's the 60 millimeter refractor with the calcium K filter. Focal lens 500 millimeter F 8.3. And for visual imaging, 80 millimeter eyepiece, but uh, in my age, the visual imaging is quite limited. So also would be better after a cataract uh, operation or for young people, for kids, they see very well in calcium K, almost like an image. And that's the calcium K filter I use. Um, you can use them up to 100 millimeter. Uh, above that, you need an energy rejection filter, front mounted filtering required uh, to filter out stray UV and infrared energy. That's important for the safety. So uh, calcium K filter in detail with uh, the aperture, the barrel eyepiece holder, and it uh, filters a wavelength of 393.4 uh, millimeter. That's just at the beginning of the visible wavelengths. So it's just, uh, just here, the calcium K2 line exactly. Uh, that's just after the UV wavelengths, what is not visible. Therefore, the color is a mixture of uh, blue and blue and purple. So that what the coloring there. So. And the band pass uh, white is uh, to angstrom, so you don't need like in hydrogen alpha a tuning. That's my camera, the EC174M with 2.35 megapixel and a one and a half inch Sony CMOS filter. Now, for the imaging that is also for the ISS transit important, you should have good quality seeing as a good quality equipment, good a clear sky. Yeah, theoretically 10 seconds between clouds are enough. You will see in my demonstration today. Uh, then good seeing, less haze, less atmospheric interferences, of course, hopefully no clouds and no high clouds. In hydrogen alpha, it's one to two hours after sunrise in both before sunset good because of the thermic conditions and uh, it's not that hot. Whereas for the calcium K, it's later because you have weak light conditions with the calcium K, you need higher exposures, more light. Uh, and um, so the telescope should not be under the heat and the sun and important is for every imaging to get the optimal focusing right. And uh, I was to see when you optimal focus, also you get the ISS also better focused as well. And you see in the lower distance around between 400 and so my experience is 600 kilometers, also details, sharper details of the ISS. And uh, in calcium K, I've seen you can also see other structures like the plague is around the sunspot and also the calcium cake, the small grains. Bad seeing is of course not good for focusing, especially as the cloud. It's much easier with a tracking mount to do that. Um, and of, it needs also 
good processing skills, time, patience, luck, and preparation with the image, imaging of the ISS transit, you need to be organized and prepare and uh, yes, and plan in advance. So factors of good seeing are mentioned uh, that uh, like not no fog, no haze, sunrise, sunset is also not good. And then, of course, temperature differences between ground and air, so hot concrete may be not a good idea. And vibrations of uh, wooden balconies, I know that for myself is also not optimal. And turbulence inside the telescope. And of course, the optical quality of the observing uh, instrument. Of course, you can then in processing sharpen to a certain degree, you see, uh, depends also on the on the noise, uh, how much you allowed to sharp and uh, how much pixelated it gets. Then when you sharpen, that's you have to look at as well. So that only showed that slide that how I processed it and what was the workflow before about two years ago. Uh, I used fire capture instead of uh, sharp cap. And I extracted the single fr frames that I still do, but then also in the processing, I copied and pasted every single ISS frame. That was quite work intensive. Also the selection tools in Photoshop were not that good as now, that uh, is with the object selection. And uh, yes, um, so I showed that only as comparison. Same processing is always also for transit of aeroplanes and birds as well. It, it's the same workflow in principle, except uh, the planning with the applications is maybe different. For example, birds and aeroplanes, you can't plan. They're coming by random, yes. So now that was the old fire capture application. I don't use it in the tablet anymore because it's far too small with my old eyes. I wouldn't see the details and couldn't read the letters. So uh, no, and that was not possible to tweak it. So I decided to go to sharp cap, but it's much better anyway. So that's the new workflow. I do a summary and show everything then in detail. That's the main part of my presentation today. I uh, show you the how I image uh, the ISS from the beginning, from the preparation. Uh, then from the preparation with the ISS transit application, then the imaging with sharp cap stacking with auto stack it, and then the processing on Photoshop and also how to extract the single eyes as frames and then put it in Photoshop uh, and get the ISS frames in all one image but with uh, the layer application and also maybe using mask it depends how I want to have the ISS lined up and, and then when I have finished the ISS image, I then uh, uh, that copy it in the stacked image of Photoshop and the better quality image. And uh, then again, try to blend it together. And uh, then as next step, I use that ready image and copy in the overexposed images of the pro prominences. And then I can uh, play around inverted disk and uh, uh, look at that as well. Oh. And this uh, example of the ISS transit, the distance will be 530 kilometer. That, yeah, I showed them later. That are the preparation tools for the for imaging of, of an ISS transit. You have the atomic clock, that's crucial. Otherwise, you don't get the right time. You need that. Uh, I have in here application on the Android smartphone. Uh, then CalSky, that is also an application that was so the golden standard, but I think with the maps and so on, it's not as good as that ISS prediction software I mainly use now from the smartphone. There's another one that's a transit finder via internet. It's quite useful as you can pinpoint the location and you get exactly the time 
of the ISS transit and also where it crosses. Uh, so that's that's also a use as well. That was an example from a transit that was in September 19. Now I come to the current transit uh, that was in Kaiwaka I did two days ago and I thought I used that transit to showcase how I process it and image uh, the transits. So that was the preparation. I have the ISS transition prediction software. Then is the map and here you see the transit cross. Here is the time. That was the time where it's exact. And here you see the transit a range of a 530 kilometers on range. And I decided then for Kaiwaka. The next slide will really show at a caveat. When you prepare, you say, OK, in one week before, ah, that's an ISS transit, I can't go, I don't work, it's a weekend, or I have free and holidays. So I plan, open the application, OK, and see where the transit goes. When you do it about one week earlier, you, it's not in Kaiwaka, that's there, but it's uh, near Topunu, Topuni. So if you go with that and don't look at the application, you miss the transit. Uh, so you need to use it the day before at the same day in the morning to get the most accurate location. Uh, the good thing on that ISS transit prediction cell, you have here the, the blue dot. So when you drive to the transit, and you have the phone on, you can see exactly how far you're in the range of the ISS transit. It's not always 100% pre precise, but, but close to it. So that's the location of it to prepare. And um, of course, with that transit in Kaiwaka, it was a little bit dramatic because the clouds came, came and go. There were clear patches. And I had to sust out how the clouds are moving. And I was at first at this crossing. And then I thought, okay, I go in direction Mangawai. That looks like a nice blue sky, but uh, it looks like the clouds moving also in that direction. I thought, nah, they were slow moving. Rather, I stay there in Kawaka because the clouds may moving away and then I have a clear patch. And that was indeed the case. But uh, the dear clear patch vanished just uh, about one minute before the transit, but nevertheless, I got something I will show. So, so it's a little bit luck, planning, intuition as well. And then the timing, for example, that was here 12.55, one second, one three eight. I look about, yeah, 20 seconds. I have the image time for the sharp cap. So I said, okay, set it up about 20. 54, 45, then I should capture the easily the transit. What was indeed, uh, what was indeed the case? I got it then, yeah. So, so that's the setup. It covered at the hotel that was with the, uh, the I did the image with my phone, therefore you don't see the atomic clock here. That was, I think, before the transit. Uh, here is my tablet with the sharp cap application, then here that uh, solar quest mount, then the refractor, the 60 millimeter with the camera connected uh, to the PC. So, and that's the setting that I have the car so that it, that everything is in the shadow. Also the computer that I can see it well. So that's the usual my setting when I travel to see the ISIS transit. Oh yes, it was a clear patch. I calculated it right. But one minute before the ISIS transit, the clouds came and then I had to wait. Do I get this 10 second clear patch where I may see it? So that was the excitement uh, there. So so that's the setup close up. You see the clouds behind. So, it's, so that uh, was a clear patch and you see it. The clouds are coming in, so just where the sun was, it's it's always a meter of luck. Afterwards, you could say, should I gone 10 meters far or not? It's difficult. You can't always set it up again and again. So you have to choose a location and then hope for the for the luck. So then it's the sharp cap that was the imaging. So that's the sharp cap, how it looks like. And I use 20 seconds uh, 
with the quick capture that was an exposure I used in about 0 0.2 uh, milliseconds and I looked at the image if it's a uh, let's say, see still there, but I do it as dark as possible because the less exposure, the sharper you get the ISS. So, so that's, and then after the imaging, I have the videos together. I do always some videos before the transit as well, as I have to do the prominences before an image when there's a clear sky, because sometimes you get the ISS, but the, the disk is too cloudy, so you can't get a good stacked image. So then you have to use uh, images before for stacking and um, blending the ISS frames there. That I have to do at this case because uh, that was the video there. Also the stacking result was uh, was shocking. Also that's, that was not usable. So I used then this image for the disk to to blend in the ISS frames, as it was 49. And, uh, and then for the prominences I used that. So I had two decent sharp uh, images there. And I used them a certain method with the blending that it looks as natural as it was at the transit, also with the clouds. And here then, uh, here they extracted ISS frames up to 49. So I use AutoStack at AS2 with AutoSharpen. Sometimes may also sharpen with pixels inside due to pixelation, or you can use in Photoshop the, a certain application with the radius with, uh, um, with a more sophisticated uh, sh sharpen, sharpening on the filter. So usually 50% of the uh, of the frames I utilized, that was sort of what I thought it's the best result. And I use Autos AS2 because AS3, it takes the image stabilization often two minutes, I don't know why with the tablet, whereas the auto stacker is much quicker. Whereas for extracting of the, uh, of the ISS frames, I use auto stacker 3, that's uh, much more, uh, you can get more frames out, it's more accurate. Uh, that's sort of my experience is uh, sometimes when there is a lot of uh, clouds in this year, sometimes have to use 100 percent or sometimes the planet processing what sometimes can help with high clouds that you get still an image. So that's an example how I stack uh, the image without the stack it now. That are the stacked image I've done for this ISIS transit in Kavaka last Sunday about 13.54-35 seconds at the end, according, the, according that images in the atomic clock. Yeah, that uh, looks pretty accurate. So here are the stacked images. Uh, so I have done. And, uh, and that that is the result of the original one. It's uh, not very good. So. Uh, didn't use them except for the ISS extraction. So here to the ISS extraction. So that was the original image of the of the sun of the also of the video. And now that was the first frame. Now I looked where the ISS frame is. That is here the first frame. Then I exported it and saved it. So saved it as that number ISS1. And then I went to the second frame. It's one number further and I type it in the next frame. That's much easier than to, uh, to look around when you have the next ISS. So it's better to type it in number two and then number three goes up then to the last one number 49. So I have then all ISS frames extracted. So now the work with auto stacker and stacking is finished. So the next step is the processing in Photoshop. So I load then the ISS frames, all the ISS frames into the stack. 
from and from number one to 49 with click and shift so I get all the images in the stack then I click OK I don't do automatic align and then I select when I have the image all downloaded I click the first one and then shift the second one and I select all for darken instead of normal. I do the darken. And now you see what is happening there. So, so that's the blending mode. And then that's the result I get. So I get all ISS frames nicely lined up. Sometimes it's more in bright areas. You didn't see it so well. That was here a little bit an issue. When it's a good weather, like with the transit I did at the 5th of March, it was not such an issue there, but that sort of challenged more my processing skills as well to look if I can improve that. I will show later. So that's now all the blended in. So, so I saved it as TIFF and also I do this JPEG and then I flatten it. There's a new layer. I sometimes I zoom in the screen to see better the ISS frames. So, and they're getting out pretty sharp. So I was quite okay with that considering there's really dire conditions uh, within the clouds. So new later and then flatten and that's the flatten image a little bit zoomed in. So I have now the all the blended uh, ISS frames on one image. They are all single frames uh, putting together 49 frames, but the outcome of the single image and the quality is, of course, is not as good as a stacked image of 1360 frames. So, so therefore, the next step. So, before I go to the next step, I try to optimize that image with sharpen more. I think in that case, I didn't uh, matter the noise because for the ISS, it was important to get them as sharp as possible. And then I uh, also tweaked around with brightness contrast. And that is sort of the processed blended image of ISS frames uh, now finalized after brightness contrast. Now it comes to the next step. Next step is I open the stacked calcium K disk image. So the best one what I have, of course, usually with the last transit, I use the original image because that was also the best one. But in that case, I have to use an image about uh, five minutes uh, earlier. And that's quite relevant because uh, in five minutes, uh, the, the sun is rotating a little bit, so that's quite relevant for the processing. I've learned that. So, so that whereas when you have the original one, that's that's okay. You need not to uh, consider that at all. So that I opened it in Photoshop 22. So that's the stacked image, closest good image I've had. Uh, very nice with the sunspot R60. Uh, 75 and 76 and the IR 2974 where the ISS also crossed this sunspot. So that's very nice image. It was also good focused. Everything is fine there. So now that image will be blended together with the ISS frames. I, I choose, there are different ways to do it. You can also crop the ISS and then put it in. Uh, but I chose rather to have the whole disk image blending in and it looks also it's a much more accurate uh, presentation how the transit uh, looks like. So what I do, I object select all that image with the ISS frames. That's a fantastic selection method. Uh, that's the preferred one I use now. And uh, yes, and then I copy and paste. So, so 
on the copy it and paste it into that stacked image and you see the outcome in place it's not completely in line with the stacked images so i have to free transform it so that means to get it in line with the image when it's the same image like with the other transit it's quite easy you you can blend the images together and there's no problem but that was a little bit more challenging uh, so that's the layer one free transform now I put it together and see what happened here. That's the easy with the rotation, of course, in five minutes, the sunspots are moving a little bit. So that small sunspot is double, that is elongated, that's again double. So when I saw that, I said, yeah, what I have to do now? Uh, so of course I have to rotate the layer one with the transform uh, tool, sorry, with the transform tool and rotate it uh, in the in clock direct direction and yes and tweak it so, as long till I see uh, that uh, sunspots and the structures are aligned. So I had to play around a little bit with uh, warp and uh, also other tools of the as of with Q warp to get that really right so that's all that structures are right so there was a little bit playing around and then uh, after that i got it so far around i'm quite happy of course a little bit the clouds may have blurred a little bit the structures there but that is not possible that's that's uh, the conditions i've had so that's now the finished uh, image in black white stacked image of the ISS uh, frames, uh, the 49 frames put in, in the stacked image. And you see, of course, a much higher quality. Now I, I cropped it in and go now to the next step. Uh, I prefer that doing that way, crop that image. Then of course, uh, flatten the image. So that's the one image now. I open the overexposed image of the prominences. That's the last step. And then you have this over, overexposed images of the prominences here. It's only one prominence really visible. And uh, in that image, I copy and paste now the blended ISS image there. So what is the next step to do? It's a free transform again, so that means I have to adjust here that space so that does not look so good. But here, due to the cloud, it's the rim is not completely tidy as it usually is under best condition, but it was doable. Yeah. So now free transform. So here, fine tune it with that slip. Uh, with the dots here and um, so that it fits uh, both layers fitting in. So layer one in the layer background. Now that's the free transform images and then I also use brightness contrast to optimize the images also to see uh, yeah, and that the ISS is as good as possible visible as well and the structures and you see at this day it had really luck that the, the clouds were going through the whole 20 seconds and only when the ISS was transiting in there was a light clear patch and I saw it the whole way afterwards the clouds came again so there was really a quite lucky uh, constellation to get that at all done and here the next one uh, use also to optimize further the shadows and the highlights on the prominences and on the uh, and, and on the disk uh, use the shadows and then uh, the highlights and when that is finished now the black white images is done and now I'm coming to the coloring of uh, that so I need to change the mode in RGB color not in grayscale and I don't do it flattened so I can process 
both the prominences and uh, the uh, and the disk itself. So now I do the color balance as adjustment color balance. Then I color it. That's the usual color combination I use. So that what the, what's then the outcome of this color, this purplish blue, and that's sort of the final colored image. And here I can then play around a little bit. To invert, I have to go black, white, and then color again. So I get that inverted in image where you see the ISS uh, frames a little bit better contrasting. So yes, so that's uh, uh, mostly used both the inverted and the non-inverted with the solar disk. And when you see here, there's a problem. Uh, here, the ISS frames didn't come out so well and so clear contrasting uh, around the sunspot area. So what I had, what I tried to do at first, I tried to copy and transform. It didn't look good, so I thought, okay, I selected with the polygonal lasso, is that one, and try a little bit get some brightness and contrast out, and I did that with that, with that frame, that frame and that frame so a little bit so on the little bit I got something more out so that's then the final images with uh, the, what I got now of the ISS then I inverted it but completely also also the prominences so that's the inverted image and then here now at the end, I'm soon at the end of my presentation with the Photoshop processing. Uh, that's the final image now uh, with uh, the ISS transit here, also seeing across the sunspot and then the, the sunspot structures and here the prominences. And yeah, the blurry, the, the blur comes from the high clouds that that's possible not to change that's to accept and post that's the moment how it was that was the transit like theoretically I could have gone the other way cropped only the RSS frames and put it in the in the uh, tidy disk as well but I thought that that was the moment I rather preferred that so that was in front of the Kaiwaka Hotel. It yeah, was also exciting that one guy asked me what I'm doing here and explained it to him and said, he said to me, good luck. Yeah, sometimes when you do the ISS transit, you get nice experience, nice encounters with people. Once I got also a guy from Maori Fano. Yeah. So that's the inverted one. It's contrasting better the inverted one, I must say, the inverted ISS. They're normally inverted and that's with the solar disk and here, of course, it's not so contrasting well with the, in the, when the ISS transits at the, into the sunspot, so that's the difference. So here now the video in black-white, quite a short transit. And there were the circumstances, I was lucky. And here, before I finish, I a little bit talk about the video processing workflow, what I do and how I can get to that video I showed you before. It f first, I convert the SR video to AV and then get it on the video pad. It's an application I bought that's uh, more comfortable to trim the video with that application, but only the trimming. Then I export it as MPEG, email it to my Galaxy S8, crop it with an Android application Copic, and then in Calcium K, I like to color it a little bit in blue and on dawn at the Android video editor. So that's the workflow for the video processing, and I show it a little bit in more detail. Uh, I convert in the SR, SER to the AV video. Uh, that you can do with the SAR player, that's uh, no problem. That I use now, and that's uh, quite happy with that. So then, when I, then this is the video pad, and that's the application. 
and I had to drag it to this application as so I drag it there. So then I have the video there. And now I'm going to trim it. You see the red and blue point for the beginning, the end of the video. So that's sort of the trimmed image. And uh, that's the final image, but the cropping is quite challenging with this application. I prefer to do it uh, with the smartphone. So that's the, I emailed the video to my smartphone and that's now the cropping in the Copic application. So it's the crop, the crop and video, open that and then I crop, this is the crop area, that's a crop, it then, and that's then the final image. And that I, after coloring in blue, so now that's the video in blue. Looks more natural for the calcium K. So, and that is all of my presentation. Thank you for attention. Maybe for a coffee is a little bit too late, but you never, yes, that's what the application shows when you finished the cropping. And uh, yes, thank you for your attention. I hope you can get something at home, how ISS uh, imaging of ISS transit uh, working out and uh, appreciate uh, and to answer questions from your side. Thank you, Otto. That was really, really interesting. Uh, we've got just one question at the minute, but if anybody wants to get in and ask another one, then uh, I'm sure we'll have time. Yes. Uh, but first of all, Niven would like to know, what's the positional accuracy you need to ensure to capture the transit? If you were on the other side of the road, for example, would you miss it? Uh, no, 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 that's that's not, uh, I mean, it's not that sensitive. Of course, if you have a distance of 430 kilometers, maybe 100, millim uh, 100 meters can make a difference that the transit is more on the periphery than in the center. But no, no, and the, the application shows you the range when you drive. It's like that blue dot, what I explained before. Uh, when you drive, you see in the smartphone with the blue dot, where are you? Where are you within the range? Are you within the range? Because the red, leave us what I show you it once more the slide. Maybe that's explained it better. One moment. So I go back and show it once more. I think that's then. Uh, it's uh, optimal, so so sorry. Uh, it's a little bit uh, also, and uh, because there's a range, but uh, you see exactly the ISS range. That's the fantastic thing of the ISS trans uh, prediction application uh, to see exactly where I'm when I'm driving and where I am standing. So the blue dot. So here we zoom there. So here, that's. Uh, that's the blue, that's the middle, that's the center line. And here I was there. So that means I was close to the center line. But when you look back here, so yeah. So when you look back here, this is the center line Kaiwaka, and I was almost close to the center line. So I would have really not missed it at all. So when I, on the other side of the road, yes. But it can be relevant with the clouds. It could be theoretically in a cloud cover like that. If I had stood on the other side of the road, maybe I would have had luck with the with the clouds, more luck. And here, that was the preparation. So that means here was, of course, outside. It is my home. But so on. so the blue dot shows you exactly where where you are. So that's yeah, that was what I was positioned. I hope that was uh, the answer Niven wanted to hear. Thanks for that, Otto. There's plenty more comments uh, um, thanking you for your presentation and being impressed with your work, but there are no more questions. So thank you very much once again, Otto. That was a great presentation. I'm sure our members got a lot out of it. Okay, now thank you very much. Bye. Kakite, Wiedersehen.